Welcome back to our cottage garden in Somerset and we wanted to make a video showing you around last week but things have been a little bit chaotic. Um, we've got some renovation work going on in the house that's been getting in the way but I have been making a video about that so stay tuned. You can see our bathroom getting demolished and completely rebuilt. It's not finished yet and it's been a really long and ongoing process so it's been getting in the way a little bit but we're back now and we're showing you around. So the other reason that we had to miss out filming last week was because we had a fox break into the garden and it was kind of bad timing, not that there's ever good timing, but it was the day before the flock down was um, ending so the ducks were allowed out in the garden and I think the fox just figured it out and got in and took one of the ducks and thankfully Aaron spotted it out the window and chased it off before it could snatch the others so we did lose one duck called Dove which was really sad but somehow astonishingly we've got all three left um, I think it was just luck, uh, good timing that Aaron spotted that happening out the window but we did realise that our enclosure wasn't fox proof so we had to spend all of last weekend and a couple of days in the week um, building a new one so we've done that now and it's finished Hopefully we can get back into the swing of gardening um, and showing you around on a weekly basis. Anyway, um, showing you around the garden. So at the moment we've got a few tulips left. Um, most of our tulips were early tulips so we don't have too much in the way to show you there. Um, although it is peak tulip time at the moment, our peak tulip time in the garden was probably a couple of weeks to a month ago. Um, however, having said that, there is so much new growth going on now. Everything's really exciting and lots about to happen. And this is the kind of in-between time where um, once the tulips are finished, the primroses are finished, you're just waiting and all you kind of have at the moment are things like aguilegias and the forget-me-nots to carry you through. Luckily we've got loads of forget-me-nots and they're a really beautiful blue frothy kind of effect going on in the beds up here, which I will show you. Um, a few tulips popping up here and there, but we are still waiting for things like roses. Um, we've got a few alliums that are getting ready to flower, so possibly next week I can show you those. Um, but the idea with the alliums was that they would fill this kind of empty time while we're waiting for the next kind of big display from the garden. But it is like that, it comes in big waves um, and then you have a break and then you get a big wave and a break and that's a kind of nice pace that we're happy with. So let's go and have a look around. Next to me is our new duck enclosure that we built um, to stop the foxes coming in. And it's not the most beautiful of things, but we just needed to get it done really quickly. If we'd had more time, we probably would have asked our friend to help who built the shed. Um, but unfortunately we had to just put something together ourselves as quickly as we could. Um, we locked the ducks in their barn for a few days while we were building it and um, they really didn't like that. So we wanted to get it done um, as soon as we could so that they can come out again foxes are a lot more intelligent than I realised um, so they can just try they'll try digging they'll try scratching they'll try climbing they're not afraid of the broad daylight or the dogs here so um, it came down at 12 o'clock in the middle of the day while the dog was out here and took a duck and was completely unfazed by it um, we thought they were a little bit more scared than that um, thankfully they are scared of us so we know that if we're out in the garden with the ducks the ducks are probably safe as long as we're keeping an eye on them but we had to think of all those things while we were building this for the last year we've had them completely free ranging across the whole garden it is nothing short of a miracle that they haven't been taken already so we're lucky we've got three of them left we've got a safe enclosure now and we've got a plan and we're really really hoping that we can keep them safe because we were devastated when we lost dove so it was a bit of an exhausting weekend but i think we've come out better for it and hopefully they'll be safe now I'm just quickly going to show you this bed. Um, this is an example of how nice the forget-me-nots are when there's not much else going on. So in here we've got um, oriental poppies, alliums and clematis. They're all very close to flowering but not quite ready. Um, so we're just relying on the forget-me-nots to get us through. Um, they're a really good thing to let self-seed around the garden. Um, 
we never bought any forget-me-nots. We had a small patch here and I've shaken the seeds um, at the end of their flowering season and we just get more and more every year and it's amazing. Um, but they are really useful, they flower for a long time and I love this stage when the stems get really long and there's just a mass of blue froth all over the, the borders. You can see that the grass is a little bit patchy at the moment and mainly that's because while we were building our duck enclosure we had tools and materials lying all over the place so we've tidied up now but it needs a little bit of time to recover. Um, we're doing no mow may in some parts of the garden so no mow may is basically you don't mow the grass and it benefits your insect population so we've allocated parts of the garden to no mow may but for, um, we have got a central path running through everything just for access sake so if we need to clean the ducks out we can get the wheelbarrow up and down but we do have some really nice patches of long grass where we've got things like cow parsley clovers you can see the primroses are um, going over but they're they'll be um, still growing and getting bigger for next year's flowering display loads of daisies buttercups a few dandelions so lots of lovely wildflowers things that you might consider a weed but actually they are very pretty and they do benefit insects so it's worth leaving them in um, and I'd encourage you to do no mime even if it's just in a small area of your garden because it still has a benefit and now that we're progressing through spring, we do have some food that we can finally start to harvest. And it feels like it's been ages, but we can finally walk around the garden and harvest some things together. So the first thing I'm going to take is this cauliflower. And I actually planted this such a long time ago that I forgot it was a cauliflower. I thought it was cabbage um, and a cauliflower has miraculously appeared. Um, it's a little bit later than we would have liked to have picked it. So you can see it has started um, progressing towards flowering and the florets are opening up and there's quite a lot of gaps in there, but it will still taste fine. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that one. The good thing about growing these in spring is we don't have too much trouble with butterflies. Um, when we grow them in the summer or autumn, um, you'll find lots of little poop and eggs and things from the caterpillars and um, it's not particularly lovely, so this is a lot easier. Um, I could have folded the leaves over like this um, to make it stay white. Um, you can see it's gone a bit yellow because I didn't do that, but it doesn't affect the taste. Um, so we're happy with this, <laughs> that's good. Um, this is our second one that we've harvested. Um, we've just been staggering how we're harvesting them because we can't eat them that quickly, but we're gonna have cauliflower cheese for dinner tomorrow with this. I'm also gonna go ahead and take some of the leaves from this chard, which has gone to seed, but we do just leave the flower heads on there. Um, sometimes you can collect seed and other times, if you don't do that, it's still good for the pollinators. Um, and you can eat these, these leaves still, so we'll have a few of those with our cauliflower cheese tomorrow. Next up is our asparagus and we've been harvesting from this from a little while so this is our early variety and then we also have a bed of a later variety that's just starting to take off. So we've been picking from the early variety but you're supposed to do it um, every day or every other day and if you leave it they get really tall and leggy like this and the ferns start to appear. Um, so there are a few short ones left that I'm just going to take um, but you can see we've not been very good at keeping up with harvesting these. So you just cut them at the base of the plant as close to the ground as possible and these will be really tasty. One thing to watch out for when you're growing asparagus are asparagus beetles and I've just noticed that ours are back already. Um, so it's not the end of the world if you spot them but you probably do want to squash them um, because they feed on the asparagus and they love the new growth and they basically gnaw away at the bark until there's um, no green parts left and then the plant can't photosynthesize um, and they just eat the plant's energy so it can become weaker or die in a worst case scenario. Uh, we struggle with tons of asparagus beetle and it's something that I really hate doing but it's just something you have to get on with. So I come out here with a pair of rubber gloves and I just squash as many as I can see. At the moment there's a few of them here or there. Um, it's not like there are masses but I expect by next month once the asparagus is in its kind of fern stage they will be everywhere and I will have to keep squashing them. Soon we will also be harvesting our garlic and maybe some of our walking onions. Um, you can see the onions and um, chives in the bed in front of me have all got little flower heads on at the moment um, and the reason I'm growing the chives is for the flowers actually um, and they're a beautiful type, type of little purple allium so like a long stem with a big purple circle on the top and they're so pretty and the bees love them so I'm really excited for those to flower 
Um, I'm also going to try harvesting some of the walking onions soon. You can see they've started to walk, um, which is when the stems get so long that they collapse and drop a new bulb kind of next door, um, which is how the onions spread and you end up with more of them and how they get their name. Um, but I haven't half harvested them yet, I want to leave them in for a little bit longer. We've also got our garlic bed, which we'll probably need to give a few more weeks. Um, the garlic's actually looking really small at the moment and we haven't had any scapes from those either. Um, so the scapes are the kind of emerging flower heads which you would cut off and they're really tasty if you fry them. Um, and that's a sign that the garlic's almost ready, um, but we haven't seen any of those yet. Um, but the elephant garlic is looking amazing. It's like the, the stem is the size of a leek. It's absolutely huge. So I have a feeling that those have done well. Um, the other variety that we grow is called early purple white. Um, it never seems to be that early or that great. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, the plants are looking really small, but it's all just trial and error. We don't mind if it's small, it doesn't matter. Behind me in the orchard, we have um, a lovely mass of cow parsley at the moment. I love this time of year. Um, it's just all wildflowers with a few um, that I've added in myself. So I've added in a few oxide daisy plugs that are starting to appear. There's loads of comfrey, um, cow parsley. The blossom is all finished. It was over so quickly, I barely even got to see it this year. Um, but you can start to see now tiny fruit. So I've seen some tiny apples. Um, I have also seen our first peach, which is really exciting because we've struggled to get our peach trees going, but we now have one that survived and has peaches on it. So that's really exciting. But the sun's setting now and it's probably time for me to lock the ducks in. This may have been a slightly shorter video than usual, but we hope to be back next week with um, a no time constraints and a full length tour around the garden so thanks for watching and if you enjoyed watching this video please subscribe and hit like and look forward to showing you around next time